from Bakari Sellers, who, of course, is a weirdo race baiting CNN CIA talking head puppet. But he says, great conversation this morning on Trump debt, even quoted 50 cent thoughts. Now, quite obviously, they don't actually want thoughts. They want sheeple who are going to parrot these talking points. And this video, of course, is a little bit older from before the 450 million billion trillion dollar bond or whatever was reduced, which I guess the bar is so low that somehow a victory for a completely corrupt clown show scam lawfare attack. But the um, the lower third here says Biden's cash edge widens as Trump lawyer fees pile up as if that wasn't exactly the plan. Me now, CNN political commentators Bakari Sellers and Sir Michael Singleton. I want to talk about a different money story this morning, and this has to do with the half a billion dollars that Donald Trump has to come up with by Monday. And but then he didn't, and like I said, this is an older video. He didn't have to. They reduced it to, I believe, one hundred and seventy-five million dollars, which, after the big ask of half a billion dollars, does seem like a victory, but it's still all completely fraudulent. And Sir Michael, one option. If Donald Trump can't find the money that he has, which he, he didn't need to. And I'm going to let this keep going. But I also think it's very strange that any of these people are Bakari sellers in particular. Oh, you, he, well, he wants thoughts. No, he doesn't. Now, I haven't. And I've been known to comment on some of these weirdos Instagram pages and they tend to block me for only making jokes, little one liners here and there. And they block me. I haven't done it to him yet. But before they reduced the the bail or whatever, let's see what these weirdos have to say about all oh, Trump is in panic when obviously they're the ones in panic mode telling you that oh, Trump is dangerous. He's a threat to democracy. Uh, they're batting at the top of the order with Russia and Stormy Daniels. It's all absolute nonsense would be to declare bankruptcy. But the Washington Post reports this morning, CNN's got some reporting on this over the last few days, too, is he really doesn't want to do that because <laughs> the Washington Post and CNN reporting. Why would anybody that your credibility is shot? You got people quitting and getting fired left and right. Nobody trusts you anymore. As he thinks there could be yeah. political implications. What political implications? I mean, look, I, I certainly wouldn't advise that as an option, John. I mean, the last thing you want is for the American people to perceive uh, the former president as being incapable of managing his finances uh, when most of them are expected to manage their finances in their day to day lives. It's just not a very good political look. It doesn't bode confidence. But I am curious. John That's fair. And I, I don't know who this guy is. I don't know him from a ham sandwich. Apparently, he's a Republican strategist, but he he was doing that just fine. That's how he made so much money. That's why you guys were even ready, willing, and able to pretend that he owed you that much money. So when you throw all these things, that's, uh, there's, I mean, the list goes on. Like, how could you vote? Um, most notably, was it uh, Stephen Colbert? It's like, how are you, he's crying. Oh, he's got 91 charges. How do you still believe him? I know, I know how numb we've become, but it's not normal. No other candidate for the presidency has ever had to pause his campaign to defend himself in multiple courts. And I would like to point out that in all seven of his cases, no one, no one doubts that he did these things. We're just sitting around patiently waiting to find out if the wheels of justice will grind fast enough for there to be any consequences. And the media is covering it like it's any other political story, like it's all horse race. It's like he doesn't have to do that. You put him in that corner and then said, look how awful he is. It's. John, about this argument that you're slowly beginning to hear out of some Republican leaning attorneys about the Eighth Amendment, about this bond figure being too high for the former president, about it not being constitutional, if you will. Is that a, a potential argument that could be made uh, to help uh, the former president lower that amount? I certainly think it is. Absolutely. And he said this before the bond was lowered. And it's like it's all so crazy that. One hundred and seventy five million dollars, which I guess is a drop in the bucket for Trump, but it, it's completely fraudulent from the start. Right. You have big, fat, furious, phony, fanny pack, Willis, Alvin Bragg and Stormy Daniels, Jack Smith. If you had one, maybe two, you might think, OK, what's going on? But when you have four or five cases, 91 charges, it's like you you get to a point. Where even if you hate Trump, you have to say, OK, well, I hate Trump. I'm a blind partisan and I will take I can get rid of him for by any means necessary. 
and understanding that it's not real. Same thing with me, right? Like if the weirdo green hair uh, traffic stoppers don't like Bo Jiden for all of the wrong reasons, I'll take it. And I'm willing to admit that. But some of these people, they want, oh, well, he's that's, that's fraud. Just say it, bro. Just say, you know what? I don't know what's going on here, but I, I, <laughs> I've been brainwashed by the media. So I'm going to stick with that, right? It's what's the old saying? It's harder to convince someone they've been tricked than actually trick someone. Another thing you're hearing, Bakari, is that some Republicans and Trump allies say, you know what? If the New York Attorney General's office tries to maybe seize Trump properties, because one thing that could happen in theory, if Trump doesn't come up with this Monday money by Monday, is that they would have the right to go. Out. Yeah. OK, so maybe we'll see if this guy has run a new report on the lower amount after some Trump assets. But there are Trump allies saying that would be a bad look politically for New York Attorney General Letitia James. Why? No, I, I don't think it will be a bad look at all. I, I think I'm thinking about the great American poet Curtis Jackson, also known as 50 Cent, who always posts and says that he needs his money by Monday. And look, if if the money's not there by mon by Monday, then she has every right to seize his assets. Yeah. Well, OK, well, we know now and he didn't know at this time. Nobody knew at this time. But that exactly it certainly wasn't the case. But this guy wants you to believe that, you know, Letitia James had every right to seize his assets and that wasn't going to backfire on her. Do it. Go ahead and do it. Go ahead and do it. Kick everybody out. Shut the businesses down. Throw the chains on the doors and say it's mine now. And then what? You're going to you're going to sell it or you're going to keep it and fill it up with illegals. I mean, Sherman was right. He doesn't have any options. I mean, most Americans know uh, that Donald Trump's wealth is a sham. This would just further solidify the fact that he's not as wealthy as he claims to be. Oh, because he doesn't have half a billion dollars in liquid cash to give to a corrupt AG or D. Yeah, AG. I always get him confused. AG is Letitia James in New York. Fat Alvin Bragg is D.A. in New York and Furious Fanny Pack Willis is D.A. in Georgia, all of which are completely corrupt. He inflates his assets. Um, and that and that and that's a crime. He inflated his assets. That's a crime. He right now has actually lost. And one of the things Donald Trump does not like to be seen as is a loser. What I'm looking forward to, however, though, is well, oh, is that an insult? Nobody wants to be seen as a loser. Who out there is saying, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm really proud. Like you should call me a loser. What is this guy talking about? Is this White House and the campaign messaging from Democrats and Joe Biden going down the path of who is going to pay this bond for him? Who's going to get this money for him? Who's going to buy Donald Trump for $400 million? The, the person who actually helps him get out of this mess will have so much influence over somebody running for president of the United States that that should draw concern from everybody. Okay, so he wants to take the AOC talking point. Oh, this could lead to political corruption. Bro, that's you. That's... I that's literally you. You guys are the ones. Bo Jiden, Beijing Biden. He's the one that is completely compromised and completely corrupted. And then when you, you guys throw an astronomical, uh, an astronomical amount of money in a fake phony case and then say, yeah, to get out of it, he's going to have to do something corrupt. And maybe he truly does think that because the Democrats are constantly doing that, right? They're, uh, they're not stupid. They're actually really smart. But when... When somebody is guilty, they think you're guilty too, right? So, well, he's going to have to, you know, whoever pays for this is going to own him because they've already been bought and paid for. Hmm. We are on the precipice of the silly season when it comes to the Veep Stakes, who Donald Trump will pick as his running mate. And names are floated and not floated for any number of reasons that may or may not lead to the eventual picture, Michael. But one report out this morning, a couple of them say... Florida Senator Marco Rubio mm -hmm. is under serious consideration by the Trump team to be the running mate. And that made me think back to a time in 2016. It actually took place during, you know, Kate and my first marriage. We had a show and we, we took this event live where Marco Rubio went after Donald Trump. Wait, did he just reference his first marriage to the same woman? Kate and I's first marriage? Weird. Really hard. Listen.
He's like 6'2", which is why I don't understand why his hands are the size of someone who's 5'2". Have you seen his hands? They're like this. And you know what they say about men with small hands? You can't trust them. Oh, well, you know what you should do is run the clip of Hills Up Kamal Toe Harris saying that Bo Jiden was a racist and then being picked as his VP. Run that clip. I do not believe you are a racist. And I agree with you when you commit yourself to the importance of finding common ground. But I also believe, and it's personal, and I was actually very, it was hurtful to hear you talk about the reputations of two United States senators who built their reputations and career on the segregation of race in this country. We did it. We did it, Joe. You're going to be the next president of the United States. <laughs> All right. That is someone who may be on your short list for running me. What does that tell you, Michael? I mean, look, I, I think the former president is known for moving on beyond some of those past bygones, if you will. Look, Jim, the, 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 there's a recent New York Times Center poll that, that came out, John, that sh clearly showcased that the former president is leading uh, with Spanish speaking voters, individuals within the Hispanic community, within the Hispanic diaspora. And I think it is smart to potentially pick someone, uh, Marco Rubio's family, they're Cuban Americans. Uh, he's a bilingual individual. He can really speak to that particular community better than anyone else could. You're seeing that six point uh, better than Jill Biden and the breakfast talk tacos of Texas could do. Diversity of this community, as distinct as the Bogodas of the Bronx as beautiful as the blossoms of Miami, and as unique as the breakfast tacos here in San Antonio. Advantage that the former president has over Joe Biden. You just saw uh, Biden recently, I believe, in uh, Nevada talking to uh, Hispanic uh, individuals saying, I need you, I can't do this without you, and that is true. The problem is they just aren't buying that message. And so if you're looking at the overall calculation and you're looking at particular groups uh, that the former president wants to target to ultimately mobilize in some of those very crucial and critical uh, battleground states such as Arizona uh, and Nevada, I am looking for someone who could potentially target in, increase that mobilization for those voters. And I think Marco Rubio is such a candidate. Bakari, what does it say that someone who, who felt the way that Marco Rubio did in 2016 about Donald Trump's hands would then consider being his running mate <laughs> all these years later? Seriously, the evolution of Marco Rubio. No, it, I don't think it's the evolution of Marco Rubio. I think that Marco Rubio, much like Ted Cruz, show that they don't have any fortitude. And, and that, I mean, look, you know, he talked about Ted Cruz's wife, like literally talked about his wife like she was a dog. And Ted Cruz crawled back to support him. He, he talked about Marco Rubio. He, I mean, it wasn't just Marco Rubio criticizing the size of the man's hands and his hands are tiny. But it wasn't just that. And Marco Rubio uh, crawls back to Donald Trump. You see this all the time. Bro, this guy is a complete lapdog. Oh, he crawls back to bro. You this man is doing the bidding of Bo Jiden and the Democrat establishment, and obviously it's not about race, and for the millionth time I've said it, they should play up the idea that it's not about race at all, and it is more about the content of people's character and their willingness to bow to the mob at every particular, at, at every every aspect, right? So it doesn't matter what happens, just make sure you do what we tell you to do. Jump through the hoops, eat up every little piece of dropping that we leave behind, and I'm gonna point the finger on the other side of the aisle and say that they have no fortitude, even though I'm going to bat for somebody who literally told me, or black people, that if you don't do what I say, if you don't vote for me, then you're not black. But Senator Marco Rubio, who, of course, threw some jabs in on the campaign trail, as we know, also happened on the left. Right? I mean, it's just, oh, this is such a headache to watch these people just gaslight and lie. And gone are the days of a, a real discussion about policy. It is all about the, okay, all oh, the hands, or he talked about his wife. And it's just like, bro, just come, just come. Go back to the Democrat dungeon and come up with a plan. But there's nothing left. They burned it all down. 
he is a force of personality. Donald Trump is a force of personality. And what he's done is all of these individuals who he's lambasted, criticized, ridiculed, all come back to him. I do think, however, Tim Scott and Ben Carson are probably higher on the VP states poll list for uh, Donald Trump than, than Marco Rubio. I think he's probably going to humiliate Marco Rubio, much like he did Mitt Romney. You recall that dinner where he invited Mitt Romney out to talk about whether or not he was going to be secretary of state. And we had all of this conversation and he just humiliated Mitt Romney and said, well, you know, that's fair. Mitt Romney does deserve to be humiliated. Uh, not you. I think that's what's happening with Marco Rubio. It was outside the palm. But John, if oh, I could yeah. just really quickly. Go ahead. If I could really quickly, I, I love my dear Morehouse brother, Bakari, but I'm going to have to push back here. I mean, Kamala Harris on the debate stage essentially said that Joe Biden was a racist because Thank of busing, you. And she sure enough became his vice president. So, I mean, I think there's a lot of people in politics mm -hmm. who all of a sudden work with someone who they formally They're criticize. They we did it. We did it, Joe. You're going to be the next president of the United States. Are there are policy disagreements, which she had a policy difference about busing. And then there's criticizing the, the size of the man's hands. And no, it was more than a policy disagreement. She said, I don't think you're a racist, but which in Kamala speak in Kamal told Hills up Harris word salad speak dystopian Democrat double speak euphemisms means you're a racist. In saying, you know what that means. So their personal attacks and their policy disagreements, you've never had those personal. There's no, there are no policy disagreements on, it just doesn't exist, right? Bernie Sanders had a policy disagreement and they, they, you know, sold him down the river and then he bent the knee and came, you know, crawling back to the party and then later changed his, you know, from a D to an I. It's all absolutely disgusting. But this man wants to pretend that Kamala calling Boja, oh, he worked with segregationists, he was against against busing, was a policy disagreement? A policy from 50 years ago, even if that were the case? All attacks from Kamala against Joe Biden. All right, sure, Michael. Oh, Sigrid. I think that was very personal, Bakari. We're gonna we'll pick this up a different time. I do He's appreciate. Trying, it. We're trying to go to break, Sir Michael. We're trying to go to break here, okay? Sure, Michael. Sure, <laughs> Michael Singleton, <laughs> Bakari Sellers, my fellow Americans. Thank you very much. All right. Well, that wasn't quite as bad as I thought it was going to be. But Bakari Sellers is an absolute hack. 